Hello friends, I am Sanjay Gupta. I welcome you on Sanjay Gupta Tech School. Uh, you can find all my Salesforce videos on this website. So all the links are together available uh, in this website. So you can visit that. So in this video, we are going to discuss about how we can prevent recursion in case of Apex trigger. So let me first explain you the scenario. So here you can see I have a trigger on account. So uh, normally what happens when this recursion occurs, uh, mostly it uh, occurs whenever you perform after update operation. So let's say you created one method, update account, and this method works when uh, after update of uh, this, after update event occurs, right? So it means you are updating any record, then this method should be called. And if we move to this method, which is available in this Apex trigger handler class. So if we move to this method, so in this method, you iterate that new list that uh, created because of uh, update operation on account. And after iterating this, that list, you are again creating one more list uh, for account, uh, those to be updated, right? So uh, you updated one record uh, that belongs to account. Then this method uh, will be executed because of after uh, update operation. Then inside this method, you are creating one more list and you are again firing update operation. So what will happen? This update will be uh, again performed on account. So this uh, after update trigger will be executed again and this method will be called again. So then this will be again firing update uh, DML. So this way, this method will be executed again and again because uh, you initiated update operation, that update operation internally again updating account. So this uh, will uh, cause uh, recursive calling of the trigger. Right, so let me show you how uh, it looks like. So let's say this is an account and I'm updating this field, right? So I'm doing an uh, update operation, clicking on save. So you will see a, lo a long error. So uh, it started here and then you can see after update trigger event, then after update, after update. So uh, recurs recursively it is calling again and again, right? So now what we want to do uh, whenever we are first updating our uh, account record. So this list should be created and uh, this should be updated, right? And when we are applying this DML, update DML inside this method, then again, this method won't be calling, right? This kind of uh, functionality we need to build, right? So for this, uh, you can create one new class. So, Let's say I'm naming it as prevent recursion. And here you can create public static boolean first call equals to false. So this is a boolean variable whose name is first call and initially it is false, right? So I'm saving this class. And when we are calling this method here, so here you can apply if condition. And inside this if condition, you can call this. So I'm placing it here, right? So initially it is false. So first time we want to execute this method. So that's why I put not here. So it will become true, right? And now I'm setting first call as true because uh, this uh, if condition is true. So uh, I'm setting this first call as true and calling this method. So this method will be called. It will be uh, iterating new list and will create a, a account to be updated list. Then again, uh, this DML will be fired. So as this DML will fire, so again, this trigger uh, will be uh, uh, executed like uh, this after update and here uh, this will be checked if condition. So here you can see this first call. First call will be true because uh, in last uh, time we set as true and not will uh, uh, convert it into false. So again, this uh, um, update account method won't be calling, right? So here I need to put this as well because it is available in the class. 
right? So this way uh, you can control uh, recursion. So this, uh, uh, remember this thing, this is only for one transaction. So if another transaction is performing, so in that case, this first call uh, variable will be reinitiated. So accordingly, uh, operations will be performed. So now we are calling this update account inside this uh, if condition according to the first call value. So I'm saving this account trigger. So it is saved now if I uh, go here and uh, if I click on save, so you will see no error and here you can see description is also updated. So one updated we did on uh, did from UI and another update uh, uh, happened through the trigger or uh, through this update account method. And when this update account method uh, updated account once again, so a second time this uh, condition checked, so it, it, it is false. So again, this update account method was not calling. So that's why uh, recursion is prevented. So this way you can create one class and use this static variable, initialize it as false. And then after uh, calling this method first time, you can make it as true so that you can avoid recursion. So this is a simple trick that you can apply to avoid recursion. And uh, mostly it happens whenever you apply after update operation, right? So I hope you understood how we can prevent recursion in Apex trigger with this demonstration. If you want to watch more Salesforce related videos, so all the videos, those I created related to Salesforce, their links are available in this website. So you can visit this website and you can learn Salesforce. Thank you for watching this video.